لقد كان في قصصهم عبرة لأولي الألباب ما كان حديثا يفترى ولكن تصديق الذي بين يديه ولكن تصديق الذي بين يديه وتفصيل كل شيء وهدى ورحمة لقوم يؤمنون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام الأتمان الأكمالان على خير خلقه محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد Respected viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban bikum, warm and hearty welcome, alhamdulillah, on this beautiful day, on another episode on the sublime, pristine conduct of the Anbiya, alayhim as salatu wa salam. May Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala give us such conduct and such character that when other people see us out there, they feel that this is Islam, this is the deen of Islam. This is the final, uh, you know, uh, uh, way of the final prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah tabarak wa ta'ala be pleased with us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us such knowledge that is beneficial to us and benefit us from the knowledge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us. Indeed, we live in a world that is full of vice and crime today. But if we as human beings look at the lives of the Anbiya alayhim salam, meaning the prophets, may peace be upon all of them, from Adam, Adam, until Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, indeed in their lives it is all only salvation and success. Today inshallah we'll be speaking on the sublime conduct of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad bin Abdullah, as far as his speech was concerned, and his laughter or smile was concerned. Now remember, subhanAllah, Islam being such a way of life that speaks about every aspect of one's life. From the time we are created till the day we leave this world, from the morning till the evening, Islam speaks about every aspect of one's life, subhanAllah. For instance, the two things that we are going to speak about today, Firstly, the eloquence of speech of the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Secondly, his smile. Now when it comes to the eloquence of speech, then the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, لو عده العاد لأحصاه That the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke so clearly that if one wanted to count the letters when he spoke, they could do so. So if we speak in that manner, bearing in mind how many people we are addressing in a congregation, in a jama'ah, in a gathering, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala rewards you for free. Meaning that you are speaking in the same manner that the greatest of Anbiya alayhi salam, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala will reward you because you spoke in the manner he, is, he spoke. Or you are speaking in the manner he spoke. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us quality of the Anbiya alayhi salam. And like we say, رضي الله عنه ورضو عن, May Allah tabarak wa ta'ala be pleased with the Sahaba for everything that the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam done in his life, they recorded. They, they wrote down, they recorded, and they told it unto us. The beloved wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Aisha radiallahu anha, she actually relates that the speech of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not quick. It was not quick and continuous as that of yours. Meaning, he spoke clearly, word for word. And a person sitting in his company remembered what he said. Subhanallah. So, when somebody sat in his gathering and he spoke to them, then he never spoke to them fast, he never spoke to them continuously, but he spoke to them word for word. So that person that was sitting with him remembered exactly what he said. Subhanallah and wa bihamdi. The speech of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not of an abridged nature or was not very, very fast. It wasn't slow, 
nor was it fast. No, like we would say, this person is becoming boring, or that guy speaks very fast. Nothing could be understood. In other words, he never spoke so slow or so fast that nothing could be understood. He spoke calmly and clearly. He spoke calmly and he spoke clearly. He spoke with eloquence, subhanAllah. And this is something we should bring into our life, respective viewers, that whenever we speak, then let's be calm, let's be cool, let's, let's speak in a nature where people can understand us. At the same time, it's an example for us, for our kids at home, that me as a father, or me as a mother, or me as an uncle, or a teacher, if I speak eloquently, then that child at home obviously will pick up eloquence of speech without the child going for speech therapy. So I will become the speech therapist for my own child, he or she. He spoke calmly and clearly, word for word. And a person sitting by him remembered exactly what the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, subhanallah. Now if we look, look, look into the hadith of Anas bin Malik radiyallahu an, who we spoke about last week when we spoke about how many hadith he narrated and how long he served the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for. Uh, you know, he actually mentioned that subhanallah, خَدَمْتُ النَّبِيَّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ عَشَرَ سِنِينَ فَمَا قَالَ لِأُفْ وَلَا لِمَا صَنَعْتِ the same Sahabi radiyallahu an subhanallah, and we know that last week we spoke about the physical appearance of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today we are speaking about his eloquence of speech and how his smile was. Anas bin Malik radiyallahu an says that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sometimes repeated a word as was necessary. And how many times? Three times. Why? so that his listeners understood well what he was saying. For example, if he told them something very important, he said it once, for the second time, he said it for the second time, to make it, to, 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 to make it that you know it was important, and for the third time, so that they could understand. And if what he was explaining was difficult, or it was something that he had to be given a thought, or if there were many people, in a certain gathering, then he faced all three sides, meaning to the right, to the left, and forward, and repeated it to every side, meaning he turned to the right, repeated or uh, uh, said this uh, sentence one time, looked to the front, said it for the second time, and thereafter looked to the left and said it for the third time. So subhanallah, his attention was to everybody. So the, uh, those people present understood well what he, he said, repeating a thing thrice was maximum. And if saying a thing twice only sufficed, he said it only twice. We'll leave it there for, for the first uh, uh, sector, inshallah, coming back in, in, in the second sector, speaking more on the eloquence of the Nabi of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Stay tuned. لقد كان في قصصهم عبرة لأولي الألباب لقد كان في قصصهم عبرة لأولي الألباب Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban bikum Welcome back to the second sect of today's episode on the sublime pristine conduct of the Anbiya alayhim as-salatu wa salam Muhammad bin Abdullah al-Hashimi al-Qurashi Subhanallah al-Azim wa bihamdi We made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Allah tabarak wa ta'ala keep us with iman and firstly we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us iman and secondly we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for making us amongst the progeny and amongst the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There's such a Nabi who, whom Isa alayhi salam, Jesus may peace be upon him, you know, when he comes back to this world, will be amongst the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this. Going on to the eloquence of speech of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Hassan radiallahu an says once he asked his uncle, his maternal uncle, Hind bin Abi Hala, who was always described, uh, who, who always described Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's features. To describe to him the manner 
in which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke. And subhanallah, what did he say? He replied that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was always worried about the hereafter, the akhirah, and always busy thinking about the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the betterment of the ummah. At the same time, because of these things, he was never free from thought and never rested, or because of worldly affairs, he did never ever gain rest but gain rest and contentment from religious well-being. And in this it is mentioned in the hadith, subhanallah, that the coolness of my eyes is in salah. salah, subhanallah. And he always spoke clearly from beginning to the end. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Nabi of Allah, as we mentioned right now, that that every letter, if you wanted to count the letters when he spoke, you could do so. He always spoke clearly from beginning to end. He never fumbled. He never, you know, like we would say today, uh, I don't know what he's saying. I don't know what she's saying. Or he speaks too fast. He's, he speaks too slow. He's becoming boring. The Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the greatest example. He never spoke in a manner where only half sentences are spoken and the other half remained in, you know, in the mind of the speaker or as is prevalent amongst snobbish, high-minded and proud people in today's time. He spoke concisely where the words are less and meaning more. Basically, in other words, like we would say, sweet and short. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There are many other hadith in which the commentary, which are very, very short, but those who wish may refer to it and memorize it as well. Now remember, every word was clearer than the previous one. Every word of the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, respected viewers, was more clearer than the previous one. And there was no basically nonsensical talk, nor was there you know, half talks where the meaning was not complete and, you know, could not be uh, crossed. Everybody that was there felt, I am the most important to him. Because when he spoke to a person, he spoke eloquently, like we mentioned, look to the right, said it once, look to the left, said it once, look to the front, said it once, and everybody felt, I am the most important because he said it so concisely, so nicely, and the way in the manner that he said it, subhanallah, everybody felt I am the most important to him. He was, he was basically not, he was not short-tempered, nor did he disgrace anyone. He always greet, uh, basically, you know, greatly appreciated the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though it may be very, very minute. And remember, he never ever criticized anybody or criticized it. He never criti criticized food. If he, if, if, if he liked it, he ate it. If he never liked it, he left it. So the reason for not criticizing food is clear. It is a basically, you know, a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the reason for not praising it is because it might be, it might, it might be felt that one is basically, you know, uh, this person might, uh, this food might be uh, very, very not nice. But at the same time, leave it. It's not nice, I'd rather leave it. Uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of times we have this habit in us, respective viewers. If something is not nice, we'll go to such an extent that we'll actually put the cook down. Never like it, leave it. You love it, alhamdulillah. Allahumma at'im man at'amana wasqim man saqana. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give that person who has, given, who has given me drink and food, oh Allah, give him food and drink. Nevertheless, he praised the food if it was to make someone happy. To such an extent, when he came in the home, Ya Aisha, O oh Aisha, what is there to eat? Ya Rasulullah, we have nothing. The only thing we have is vinegar. And what he used to say, Ni'ma al-idam al-khil. Oh Aisha, the best food is vinegar. Subhanallah. Why? Not to disgrace her or not to make her feel down, but to praise her. Oh Aisha, don't worry. Only vinegar in the house with bread, 
The best food is bread. And sometimes praised special things. He was never angered for anything, you know, uh, like we would say, uh, 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 things for, for the dunya or for, or for this world. Things that were material, in other words. The reason being that he did not pay much attention and he did not care much about things that were material. If someone exceeded the limits in religious matters or against the truth, he became angry that no one could endure it, nor could anybody stop it till he avenged it. And if for some reason he made a gesture or pointed at something, he did, he did it with full heart, with a full hand, with a full heart. And subhanAllah, the ulama say that the reason Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the reason being that it is against humbleness to point with one finger only. Some ulama say it was his noble habit to signal uh, you know, basically oneness of Allah with one finger. Like we would say, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah So therefore he did not signal anyone in that manner. When he was surprised by something, he turned his hands and when he spoke something, while talking, he moved his hands. He sometimes hit the palm of his right hand with the, with the inside part of his left thumb. And when he became angry with someone, he turned his face away from the person. Taking a quick break, inshallah, when we come back speaking more on the sublime conduct of Muhammad bin Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Stay tuned. لقد كان في قصصهم عبرة لأولي الألباب لقد كان في قصصهم عبرة لأولي الألباب Welcome back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The third and final sect of today's episode on the sublime conduct of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Anbiya alayhi wa salatu wa salam. Yes, alhamdulillah. Wa'afu amman dhalamak. The Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forgave those that made, made dhulam or oppressed. This is what Islam teaches us. Remember for all those people out there that feel that Islam is whatever it may be, remember, people that oppress us, we will forgive them. The Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forgave people. When he was happy due to humility, it seemed as he had closed his eyes. And remember, subhanallah, when it came to the laugh and the smile of Muhammad bin Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tabassumu fi wajhi akhika sadaqah. Respected viewers, Islam teaches us to smile. Smile with people. To smile with people is a form of sadaqah or a form of charity. The laugh of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was mostly a smile. But subhanallah, when Aisha radiallahu anha was asked what was the character of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did she say? Kana khuluquhu al-Qur'an. His character was the Qur'an al-Kareem. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam always had a smile on his face. What so much of fikr and so much of, you know, worry on his head about the ummah, yet all the time he smiled. The laugh of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was mostly a smile. At that moment, his blessed, Mubarak, blessed front teeth glittered like white shining hailstones, subhanallah. And this hadith is the remaining portion of the seventh hadith mentioned in the first chapter. That every sentence of it should be read carefully and one should try to basically, you know, practice upon them as much as possible. Every action of Muhammad bin Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is complete in humbleness and etiquette. You know, like we mentioned uh, earlier on, Hind bin Abi Hala radiallahu an is a stepbrother of Sayyidina Fatima radiallahu anha. Now going on to the smile of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abdullah bin Harith radiallahu an reports that he basically, he says, I did not see anyone who smiled more than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu ala nabiyyuna Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam. Just imagine, the Nabi of Allah with all the worry of the ummah on his, on his mind, Nobody 
saw him smile more than the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jabir radiallahu an says his laugh was only that of a smile. That means he smiled more than he laughed. He smiled more than he laughed. Because a lot of times, you know, to smile, respected viewers, if, if a person has intellect, then we would know that a smile is a, is a form of beauty. But to giggle or to laugh aloud is basically a sign of ugliness. So the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa always smiled. He laughed more than he smiled. He never giggled, but when he laughed, his, his laugh was merely a broad smile, in other words. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abdullah bin Harith radiallahu an reported the same thing. That he basically, he never saw anyone who smiled more than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself. And the laughing of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was due to his happiness on granting his mercy and, and bounties on a person who is the last to be taken out of Jahannam. And on this, he used to smile. So from this it is clear that the person who was the most sinful, that's a Muslim, yet he was so greatly rewarded in this manner, what about a general Muslim? A Muslim means that person who submits himself to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and especially the Ahlullah, the Salaf al-Salihin, the pious. What great mercies and bounty shall be showered upon them? The more bounties the Ummah will receive, the more it becomes a reason for the, the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be happy. And remember, like it is said, that uh, subhanallah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam laughed because that person who after experiencing the great hardships and punishment came out of Jahannam, yet he had the audacity to express his desires and also say that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is the most merciful. Subhanallah in azim wa bihamdi. Allah's all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, al-imanu bayn al-khawfi wa raja Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu an says, on the day of Qiyamah, when Allah tabarak wa ta'ala says, everybody is going to Jahannam but, but one man, then I will have the hope it's me. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says everybody is going to Jannah but one man, and then I will have the fear it's me. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more merciful than a mother can ever be to her child. Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhu, what did he say? After I accepted Islam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never ever prohibited me from attending his assemblies. Whenever he saw me, he smiled. In the second narration, it is stated that he smiled. The second narration is mentioned because it may be known that by you know laughing as mentioned in the first hadith, the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam smiled mostly. And his, his basically his hardest laugh was a smile, the broadest smile. He always smiled, subhanallah. So smile and the world smiles with you. What does it cost you to smile? Nothing. The smile is to show happiness, as to meet one cheerfully, assalamu alaikum, smile, show that person the akhlaq, the character of a Muslim, makes one feel at ease, makes one feel that he's at home. And at the same time, he says, I have observed that many, basically so many times in Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when people came, he basically made salam with them, he put his entire attention onto that person, eyes focused onto that person, made salam, and thereafter welcomed that person. That person felt, felt cheerful. At the same time, the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was happy. And also remember, respected viewers, that we as believers, whenever we greet somebody, greet them cheerfully, smiling. And look at them in the face properly. When you look at them in the face properly, that person feels, you know what, that this man, to me or to him, I am the most, uh, basically I am the most, uh, you know, that person who is the most important to him. 
everybody around him will feel the same way. I am the most important. I am the most important. I am the most important. Because you are meeting in the man in such a manner, subhanAllah, that this person feels he is or she is the most important. That brings us to the end of today's episode on the sublime conduct of, of the Nabi of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Just for the benefit of the viewers out there, if you want to follow us, you can follow us on our account. That's on our Twitter account, hamad 6 h a m Double AD, the number six, or you can like our Facebook page, Hamad Timol, from myself, Hamad Timol. Inshallah, until we meet again, Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. لقد كان في قصصهم عبرة لأولي الألباب ما كان حديثا يفترى ولكن تصديق الذي بين يديه ولكن تصديق الذي بين يديه وتفصيل كل شيء وهدى ورحمة لقوم يؤمنون